Hey guys, in this video I want to go over how to do Rao Blackwellization of a Gibbs sampler. And so this is going to be a continuation of the Gibbs sampling video that I already have posted and I'll put a link to it in the description box below. And that video was also a continuation of another video, but you don't really have to watch those other videos to know what's going on in this one. But I am going to do mostly a demo of how to do Rao Blackwellization after you've finished doing Gibbs sampling or when you use Gibbs sampling to estimate a parameter. And Rao Blackwellization is basically a variance reduction technique. So if you use it for Monte Carlo sampling, you're probably going to use it in the context of reducing the variance of your parameter estimate. So in the example that I was doing before in the previous video, I had three parameters that I was trying to estimate. This was from some blood typing example. So I wanted to estimate genetic frequencies of the gene A, gene B, and gene O. So I labeled that PA, PB, PO. And to do that, I said, one way of doing that was using Gibbs sampling. The Gibbs sampling method was basically a three-step Monte Carlo sampling method. So I sampled for a latent variable that I called Z1. So this was the estimated count of people with AA alleles. Then I estimated another latent variable Z2, which was basically an estimate of the people who have BB genetic alleles. And then I used those two latent variable samplings to plug in to to a posterior distribution and the posterior distribution estimated PA, PB, and PO using a Dirichlet probability distribution. So this whole process was explained in a previous video. And so basically when you have this three-step or however many step Gibbs sampler method figured out what the actual distributions are and what you're sampling from, to plug that into R, you basically have a sample and then you do Monte Carlo sampling. So you do a couple number of iterations until you reach convergence and then you remove your burn in and then you estimate basically from a sampling distribution your parameter estimates. And then you can also get a standard error for your estimates as well. So Rao blockalization is a method mainly of improving the standard error or the variance of your parameter estimates. So these are PA hat, PB hat, and PO hat that we estimate. And then we probably also want to give the standard error for each of those estimates as well. So the standard error of PA, PB, and PO. So let's go ahead and get started with explaining how you could do Rao blockalization on this particular example. So in Gibbs sampling, like I just said, we are estimating using a posterior distribution which is this distribution here, which was Dirichlet. With Rao blockalization, the main idea is that you're going to get the marginal distribution. So the marginal distribution for PA, the marginal distribution for PB, and the marginal distribution for PO, and you're going to use the properties from that marginal distribution to estimate your parameter instead of estimating directly from the posterior distribution. In this example, the posterior distribution for this three parameters that we're estimating is a three parameter Dirichlet distribution. The marginal distribution from a three parameter Dirichlet is a beta distribution. So in general, if you have Q is distributed Dirichlet with three parameters, let's say alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, then the formula is that for each parameter qi, the marginal distribution is beta, and the beta distribution has two parameters. So the first parameter would be alpha i, and then the second parameter is the sum of all the alphas that's not equal to i. So the way you could write that would be the sum of i prime, where i prime is not equal to i of alpha i prime. So for this example, that's going to look like the following three equations. So I just pasted the three distributions here. For PA, the marginal conditioning on all the other parameters and all the sample data, which was in Y and all the latent variables. So basically everything, PA, the marginal of that conditioned on everything, that would be distributed beta with parameters M1 plus alpha one. And then the second parameter would be everything else. So that would be M2 plus M3 plus alpha two plus alpha three that comes from here. So again, if PA is the parameter M1 plus alpha one, that would be the first parameter in the beta distribution. And then everything else would be the second parameter. 
So we have that here. For PB, it would be the same thing. The first parameter is M2 plus alpha 2. And then the second parameter is the addition of everything else. Same thing for PO. So you can calculate always the marginal distributions for all the parameters that you want to estimate from a posterior distribution in this example. So instead of estimating from this distribution, you can use the marginal distributions. And the reason you're going to want to do this is because once you have these marginal distributions, you can use the expected value properties from these marginal distributions. So when you have a beta distribution that has two parameters, let's say alpha beta, the expected value by definition of a beta distributed random variable is going to be alpha over alpha plus beta. To do Raoult block realization in this example, we're going to calculate the marginals first and then use the expected value formula from the marginal distributions. So in this case, it's beta distribution. And we're going to estimate this and use this as our parameter estimates. When we do this, it's going to basically give us the same PA hat, PB hat and PO hat that we had before, but the variances of those parameter estimates will be reduced. So if we use this expected value formula for this example, we would get these three equations here. And I'm just going to focus on the first part of the equations for the PA, PB, and PO. The parameter estimates would be, again, alpha over alpha plus beta. So if we go back to the first marginal distribution, that would be M1 plus alpha 1 over M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 from the blood typing example that we've been doing, we have been setting alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is equal to alpha 3 as equal to 1. So in this case, we have alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1, which would give you 3. So this was explained in a previous video, and basically it's the hyperparameters of the Dirichlet distribution. So if you set those alpha parameters equal to 1, you're assuming no information or a non-informative prior. So that's how we get the form Formulas using Raoult block realization. Now, these M values are parameters that we estimate using the Monte Carlo sampling method. We are still using Gibbs sampling and we're still using this three-step Gibbs sampling to estimate these parameter estimates and we do that to plug in to these M values. So that's what the second half of these equations is showing because we don't actually know the true values of M1, M2, and M3. We estimate that given our sample using the Gibbs sampling method. So if we did that, we basically have M, which is a number of iterations in our Gibbs sampler. And then we just plug in. So this is just expanding out what M1 was equal to, what M2 was equal to, and what M3 was equal to, and getting a sample estimate based on a certain number of iterations in the Monte Carlo sampling method. So this is kind of like a quick explanation of how you would do Raoul block realization. I think it will be a lot more interesting to show the actual implementation of this in R. So let me go ahead and move over to R. Okay, so I'm moving on to the R demo and I will put the R code in the description box below. The first half of the R code just runs the Gibbs sampler. So I already did a video on all of this code and I will put a link again to the video in the description box below, but the first part of the code just does the Gibbs sampling. So the Gibbs sampler was based on 2,250 observations and I'm going to remove the first half as burn in. So I'm just gonna use the final 1,125 iterations to actually estimate my parameters. So then when I estimate PA, PB, and PO, I get these values. This is again just using the Gibbs sampling method. So those are the PA hat, PB hat, PO hat. And then from that Gibbs sampling, sampling distribution that I created, if I just take the standard deviation of that Gibbs sampler, then I get the standard errors using the traditional Gibbs sampling method. So the standard errors of my three parameter estimates are 0.008, 0 0.005 and 0 0.009. So it's really not that bad, but I'm just going to do RAL block realization in this example anyway, and we're going to see how that's going to reduce the standard errors of these parameter estimates. So for RAL block realization, I'm going to show the density plots of what the parameters look like just doing the 
skip sampling method, and then I'm going to overlay what it looks like if you do route localization. So for PA, if you just do the give sampling method, this sampler will produce a sampling distribution that's shown in the black line. And then the red dotted line is what the sampling distribution looks like when you do route localization. So you can see that the Gibbs sampler was not bad, but it's not completely, it's kind of unimodal. Like the mean is probably somewhere around here, as you can see, but it has kind of like a, a spread out peak. Whereas the peak for the RAL localization method is a lot pointier and obviously the variance or standard error is going to be greatly decreased. So that's a plot. And then if you actually plug in to get the parameter estimates, the mean would be 0.2658. That's not that different from using the Gibbs sampling method. It's basically the same thing. But then if we plug in for the standard deviation of that sampling distribution, we're going to get the standard error. And so for the RAL blackwellized parameter estimate, the standard error is 0 0.004, whereas before the standard error was 0 0.008. So it pretty much cuts in half the standard error for PA. That was one of the parameter estimates. You can do the same thing for PB. So just plotting the different sampling distributions for the Gibbs sampler in black and the Rao blackwellized sample in red. Again, you see that it's going to reduce the variance substantially and also probably give you more confidence in the parameter estimate itself because it's going to be much more peakier and unimodal. And the actual values are as follows. So the PB hat would be 0 0.09 and the standard error is 0 0.003. So we can compare 0 0.003 to the previous standard error of 0 0.005 and we see that it's been reduced. And finally for the third parameter, PO, we see the same thing. So this sampling distribution was not super peaky. It was kind of spread out again like before and Rao blackwellization makes the sampling distribution a lot less spread out. And we can see that for the standard error, the new standard error using Rao blackwellization is 0 0.006, whereas before it was 0 0.009. So hopefully this short demo showed that RAL blackwellization can be applied to a Gibbs sampler and it's a really good idea to apply it to the end of Gibbs sampling technique because it's going to improve your parameter estimates and especially it's going to reduce the variance of your parameter estimates in particular. And that's it for this video.